Alrighty. So we're recording. I'm going to go on mute and turn it over to you. Excellent. Well, good evening, everybody. Hopefully you're here to listen to me talk about automatically cross-posting things between online platforms. Uh, if you're not here to listen to that, you're still welcome to stay, but that's what I'm going to be talking about today. I have some slides, mostly to keep myself organized. Uh, let's get those full screen. And I'm going to jump on right in. So at a high level, what I'm going to be talk covering today is what do I mean? Like what is automatic cross-posting and why should we consider using it for SCA uh, groups? Or it doesn't have to just be SCA. This actually applies to kind of any situation where you're having, we, we are kind of maintaining multiple online platforms. I am Colfina in Kira Altar's daughter. I live in the barony of Bringulad in Ansteora, and I've been working for Bringulad to kind of do trial and error things, kind of testing us out, trying to find a way for us basically to manage our online information a little easier, and this is what I've come up with so far. Basic info about me, in case you're curious, uh, I've been active in the SCA since 2008. Um, I've held a variety of officer positions. I see something in the chat. Let me pull that up. Uh, am I muted? You're coming in loud yeah, and clear. Okay, me. excellent. The Yeah, we can hear you. Good, good, good. Um, yeah, so I've been in the, active in the SEO for a bit. I have um, dabbled in a lot of different uh, fields or studies and um, pretty regularly find myself teaching classes and, and just trying new things. Uh, go back to advancing the slides. Mundanely, I am a software engineer. I um, am certified in Scrum and software testing. Most of my work focuses on process improvement. Uh, finding bugs, fixing bugs, um, and I like to describe my job as my goal is to find ways that things can improve and then try and create the spaces for those improvements to happen. So up front, I want to just kind of, this is basically my disclaimer. Um, today, just a couple of things to not expect out of this. Um, I'm not going to be giving you a magic bullet solution that will just solve all of all things related to managing multiple online platforms, though I do think this is pretty good. <laughs> there may be things that work better for your group. There may be thing, completely different solutions that you find, um, but this is something that's worked for my group, so that's what I'll be talking about. And I'm not going to be doing a like down in the weeds, extremely detailed walkthrough for like actually configuring this type of setup step by step. Um, most of the automated tools, if you use them, already have existing walkthroughs, and I highly recommend starting with those first. Um, and then, if you run into specific problems, you're, please feel free, more than welcome, to um, reach out to me, and I'll help you after that. But there's a lot of good walkthroughs out there, and I did not want to try and rebuild those. So. Things to expect to leave today. I hope that you're going to come out of this with understanding what I mean when I say automatic cross-posting. Um, come away with an understanding of like how it can help solve the problem of trying to distribute information across multiple platforms. And then I am going to give a high-level walkthrough of how I have implemented things in the Bring Blood setup so that if you are um, in a position where you could be implementing this, you can at least get an idea of, of kind of what I've done. So this is a, a solution, right? So what's the problem here? What, what is this trying to, trying to solve? Um, generally, for the SCA or for any uh, organization, really, our goal, I think our goal is, I think I'm, I can say our goal is, we want people who use different platforms to have easy access to accurate information about our SCA activities. Uh, we want, if I have, say, my preferred platform is Discord, and that's the thing I check every day, and your preferred platform is Facebook, and that's the thing you check every day, I want it to be easy for both of us to find 
information about what's going on in our local group. Hopefully you want that too. <laughs> Uh, second part of that is we also want it to be easy to distribute information across multiple platforms. Uh, anybody who's, you know, an officer, it's typically web ministers, social media officers, but honestly, it could be any, anyone in a group who's trying to share information. It's like, we want that to be as easy as possible. Because if it's easy, people are more likely to, to do it. <laughs> so what's the problem? Where does this get complicated? It gets complicated because the SCA has an online presence in a lot of places. These uh, icons with their corresponding text for how many is that? 13 different online platforms. These are platforms that I have seen the SCA on. Um, I think currently uh, Facebook, Discord and Instagram and YouTube are all, all pretty high up in the list of popularity, but honestly, depending on what population you look at, any one of these platforms could be like the go-to for where people are engaging online. That's a lot of platforms. So still kind of describing the problem. So right now, um, for a lot of groups, and this is this is where uh, Bringlewood, where our kind of our uh, mode of operation was when I started looking into this is, right, what we wanna do is I say, I have some message. Maybe it's, there's a class happening in two weeks and here's the details. I want to post that to everybody who is a part of my group or is interested in my group. So what I do is I type out the message and I copy it and I paste it onto the website in a post. And then I create an email, I paste it in there and I email it to the email list. And then I open up Discord, I paste it into a message, I put it in there. I open up Google Calendar, assuming I have access and I create an event for it. I then open up Facebook and I make a post and I make an event. That's, that's a lot of work right off of the bat. What happens if you don't have access to all of those platforms. Say you don't have an account on the website or you don't have a Discord account, maybe you don't want one, or you can't update the calendar. So you post your information in a couple of spots because that's all you can reach. And that happens. Another way that can get complicated is we have all of these different sites. What if I need to make an update? And at the time I go, oh, I have Facebook on my phone, I'll edit it there. And then when I get home, I remember to update the website and the email list, but then I forget, you know, however many other places I posted that message. So there's different information. Then you combine all of those together. If you have somebody say who checks Facebook regularly, who knows if they're gonna have easy access to the same information that's on the other platforms. So we have an information problem. And I know I have experienced this in the SCA. I uh, assume other people have too. <laughs> so what are the impacts of this? I've kind of broke it out in three big chunks. One, people get confused. Some people get updates, other people don't. One person sees one copy of the information, another person sees a different version. They, they, then it's who is right, who, which one is the last updated, and then people don't know where to look to find the actual latest information. Um, another comp thing impact is that whoever is doing the organizing, if it's a guild leader, if it's an officer, if it's somebody running an event, you have to work much harder. You have to have accounts on all the platforms. You have to remember to log in to everyone to make your, your updates. Um, it's tedious, it's tiring. And a lot of times we just say, you know what? I don't wanna do that. So I'm just gonna update it here and hope that's good enough. And when you're copy pasting the same information on so many different sites, mistakes can propagate quickly. How, you know, you make a post in Facebook, it gets shared, it gets copied, it gets shared. Who knows how far that information can be spread around before you find a mistake and have time to fix it. So this, all of that are problems that automatic cross posting can help fix. The idea that I'm going to try and sell you on today is being able to post your information in one central platform, 
I recommend the website and use the other online platforms, Facebook, Discord, pick your favorite, as essentially beacons that draw people back to that central platform so that you're not having to post as much. And when you have to change things, you only have to do it in one spot. Maybe two, it kind of depends. There's some variability to it. So how does this help? Having automatic paths from one central platform to others helps reduce some of that confusion because your main platform has will be the one that essentially you, you, you build it up, you train people to realize like this is where the updates are going. This is where you check. Um, other platforms require less maintenance because instead of posting the entire entirety of your update everywhere on all the platforms, what you can post is, is what I like to refer to as, as a beacon, something that says, hey, something changed on the website, you should go check it out. Read the full post here. You know, there's different verbiages. Um, it also reduces the work that you have to do. And uh, part of that is it reduces the number of accounts that one person needs in order to distribute information across however many platforms. With this model, and I'm, I'm leaning really hard into with our websites moving to WordPress, it's fantastic like starting place facilitator for this, because then either your coordinator, event planner, guild leader, officer, whoever will only be like required to have an account on the website. And even if you don't want to require it, your web minister can have that account and they can just basically people can say, Hey, can you post this for me? One person makes one post and it goes everywhere. And because you're putting fewer copies of the information around, it reduces the impact of errors um, and the edits that you have to make. It's good all around, I think. So we had, back up our uh, example diagram of kind of the current state of things, or at least of my representation of it. So going to do an example with pictures of like, what does this look like? This kind of central platform idea. Uh, so we have websites. All of our SCA groups, I believe all of them have a website. And most, if not all of them, have been converted to WordPress. And if they're not, they are on their way. So let's assume somebody makes a post on the website. Um, and I, will, I have examples that I'll show through this as well once I'm done with this uh, photo journey, picture journey. Someone makes a post on the website, right? You have to have one person who's able to log in and make that post. It could be the web minister. It could be the officer who's, you know, making an announcement about some activity. Could be the event coordinator. Who knows? Someone makes a post. Then automatically that gets cross-posted to the group's Discord as a message, the email list as an email, and the Facebook group as a post. Um, Exa simple example is each of those platforms then gets a message, email, or post that says so-and-so has made a post about this thing. Here's the link. Uh, you can get more detail than that, less detail than that. There's, again, it's very customizable. But one person makes one post and automatically all of those platforms get notified about it. Another example, say I need to update the details for a guild meeting that I'm happening. I go through the website, fill out a form to say, here's the details for this event. That gets put in the Google calendar, either it's a new event or an updated one. And then automatically, for example, a draft event or a live event could be created in your group's meetup. So again, one person put the information in one spot and it automatically gets distributed to those other platforms. Another example with pictures, about pictures. Say someone submits an image through the website. You can do this with forms to say, hey, I'd love for this, you know, to love for you to use this on the on our on our Instagram. So the image gets posted to the Instagram, and then automatically, without having to have a person log in and make those posts, that image gets shared to the meetup, the Facebook page, and the group's Twitter account if you have one. Not all groups do. 
So we have the, the old example where a lot of copy pasting, a lot of editing, a lot of having to remember what sites do I need to post on versus I go to the website. Maybe I'm updating the event, maybe I'm making a post, maybe I'm sharing a picture and that's it. That's, that's the level of work for day to day once you have this set up, which I think is pretty awesome. Um, because of the way our websites work, if people are looking for that information, you don't have to log in to see that. Anybody can view your website. Um, so for like new people who you're trying to recruit, you don't have to say, oh, but you've got to create a Discord account in order to see what's going on. Or, oh, you know, you really need, you really should have a Facebook account. You, could, you don't have to do that at all. You say, no, just check our website. Um, the assumption being that they have, whoever you're speaking to has access to internet, which could be a problem in some places, but in general, it's safe to assume that people have access to the internet. Um, and all of your updates are going into one place. So, how do, implications, what does this mean? So before everybody, each person, you know, if I'm a Facebook user, I go to Facebook and that's where I expect to find all of the information. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. <laughs> After this type of setup, if I'm a Facebook user, I can still go to Facebook to say, hey, is there anything new going on? But what I will see instead is check the website, somebody made a post, so-and-so, you know, created a calendar event, who knows what it is. And so it's a little bit different because while you're still able to basically go to your platform of choice, you're kind of being redirected to the central hub, the website for um, updates, latest info. And then often once people are on their website, they'll start clicking around. So maybe they find other things. I love this as an example. Your website can be like Gondor. People who are in different online spaces who aren't like already looking at the website can get a beacon that says, hey, there's something going on in the central hub. You should really come over here. And I have a, scene, a clip that we're gonna watch because I love it. Hopefully the sound comes through. I can actually make this a little louder. Of course, hopefully making a post on the website will be easier than trying to light this beacon. <laughs> Sound is not coming through from the audio. From the oh audio. no. Um, that's okay, though. We still get the idea. Yeah. <laughs> I think everyone in the SCA has at least been drugged <laughs> and forced to watch it at least once, just dead minimum. <laughs> All right. Sorry, I'm clicking around a little bit. So I do, I want to click to the end. So even if the audio is not coming through, so we know, we know how this goes. Every little mountaintop gets its flame. Everybody gets alerted that something's going on. I don't want to fast forward too much. I feel so bad. I'm getting, I'm getting the audio for this and it's amazing. <laughs> I hear it in my head. It's fine. <laughs> and then there's the person at the end who sees it. What does he do? He immediately goes to tell his friends. <laughs> and they say they're gonna go. All right, so I'm sorry the audio didn't come through for that. Um, I can, however, post the link in chat later if people wanna, wanna just watch it on their own. But the takeaways to this are basically your website should be like Gondor. It's where everything is happening. And when you make a post and that you kick off this automatic path of beacons on different platforms in different locations, you should signal to people, 
we need to go to Gondor. <laughs> we need to go to the website. I should tell my friends. Um, that's my, the big, oh, wait, we've already watched this. There we go. Uh, so back to more, more wording stuff. So if you have this kind of setup, so what is this, again, it's kind of what, what does this mean for us? Um, for web ministers, right, people maintain the website, it does mean a little bit of change. Um, one big thing is if you're going to start having, basically, we want our information to be going through the website as the, like, the starting point. You're going to have to kind of retrain people's behaviors because, you know, if, most of what you've been doing is just like, oh, post on your platform of choice. It'll take a bit of changing of habits in order to, to kind of get new, used to a new model. Changing habits takes time, it takes persistence, and it takes patience. Uh, so that is something to always keep in mind if you're going to try something new that requires people to do something different. Realize it takes time, be patient, and you can, you can get there. Um, if you are having... Uh, anyone post on the website, which is something that we it supports. You need to be thoughtful about role management. There's some customization that you can do for that. Um, so it's just something you'll have to keep in mind. If you're going to be setting up this kind of thing that'll be going to your social media platforms, you'll want to coordinate with your social media officer. Um, maybe they can help. Maybe they have ideas. Maybe you want to do it together. At the very least, keep them in the loop. Uh, and it does require extra effort initially to actually set it up. You know, you got to link the accounts. You have to decide, you know, when this post happens, what do I want to get sent to the Discord? What do I want to get sent to the calendar, to the meetup? Um, and then occasionally, uh, so I've had something like this set up for Bringlod for, uh, to varying degrees. I think I started it about a year ago. Um, and occasionally you have to like refresh the linked accounts. It's kind of like, it's sometimes in your web browser, it's like, hey, we need you to re-authenticate to make sure you're still you. And so that has to happen occasionally. Um, but so far, it's just been like refresh. <laughs> it's very simple. Uh, it has implications for events and activities. If you, if you go with a model like this, it means that things like your event announcement, your event details, links, directions, class schedules, all of that can live on your website. It can be posted on your website. And then if you have um, events in your Facebook, in your Google Calendar, in a meetup, or in some other event platform, those then don't have to have all a copy of all that information. They can say, here's the date and time, full details on the website, so that you don't have to edit all of them every time. Uh, and you just make your edits in one place. Um, also has some impacts for if you're thinking about like recruiting, um, it, having a central platform like this that automatically shares information to basically all of any other platforms you pick gives you a really easy call to action when you're recruiting because when people are like, yeah, where do I learn more? Your answer is always check out our website. Everything is on the website. Um, social platforms then can be advertised as social spaces, as opposed to saying the only way to get information is to create an account on a platform you may or may not use. It'll be like, hey, if you use Facebook, you can join in the discussion there. You can hang out with us there um, and kind of return those to their kind of the, the thing that they're good at. Um, and if you have this kind of automatic cross-posting, regardless of where some new person stumbles upon your group, they will always have something that redirects them back to your main site. And hopefully then they'll find more information of, you know, guilds or hobbies or things that they want to get involved in. For the everyday participant, which I'm just using that word to mean anyone who is in the SCA as a member, as a non-member, is lurking in any way related, you know, anyway engaging with the SCA. It gives them kind of that, that single place that they know they can go to find information. They can still use their favorite platform. They don't have to create an account in 10 different places. Um, but they will start seeing more automated posts coming through. Uh, I haven't 
uh, notice that being very much of a like a problem, but it is something just to be aware of. It's like people will start seeing like automated posts instead of handwritten messages uh, every time. So now I'm going to talk through uh, Bring Balad, so the website that I've been maintaining um, and the cross posting that we have as an example. So I have this in text and then as a photo, like what do we actually have set up? Right now, there's kind of three main uh, paths. One is anytime a post is made on our website, it automatically goes to email, Facebook, and Discord. Um, whenever we have uh, calendar updates, people can submit those through the website and then it goes to the calendar and our meetup. And I'm working on adding basically like the photo, photo path. Um, so to make it easier for us to, like if we do post something on our baronial Instagram, automatically have that go to other platforms so that they're all getting that kind of injection of new imagery, uh, which I think is gonna be good. Same thing as a picture. Uh, so I've used uh, essentially the same model that I had uh, earlier. I've changed some of the lines from solid to dotted to indicate the things that I do have set up and the things that I want to have set up. And so right now, using the website as a central platform, by making one action, I can hit, what is that, five other platforms, which is great. <laughs> um, okay, so this sounds great. Look at this, there's just posts going everywhere. But how do you actually make it happen? Um, th there are basically three ways you could go about this. The first one is you can actually um, code up, program, or implement um, this cross-posting manually. Uh, you can use webhooks. You can use HTTP requests um, to send, receive, and authenticate to all of these platforms. If you know how to do that, it can be extremely customizable because you can build exactly the thing that you want to have happen. Downside to doing it all manually, which is something the ICA ran into when we had uh, HTML websites, is if you're having to do custom coding and custom development, it's difficult to maintain as officer turnover happens because it's, it's a very high bar for knowledge and skill, which may turn people away, it may mean updates don't get made, it stops being maintained and it can fall out of use. It's not like a wrong way to do it, but you run into issues with maintainability. Second option, this is the one that I've done, is to use the free version of an automation tool. There are three big ones that I've listed here. Uh, they all have the Zapier, Hootsuite and Buffer are three big ones uh, that have a free version that you can use. Because they're free, they naturally have some limits. Um, Zapier will limit the number of tasks per month. They call them zaps in this um, diagram. Essentially, each arrow would be a zap or a task. And so Zapier limits you to how many zaps a month you can do. Hootsuite limits you on the number of scheduled posts and the number of social channels you can link and Buffer also does that. And so they all have limits depending on what you're trying to do. One may be better than the other. Um, and then the last way you can go about doing it is actually using a paid version of an automation tool. Zapier, Hootsuite and Buffer all have paid versions. They essentially open a lot more versatility um, as far as like how many things you can send to how many platforms. And then there's another one called Social Pilot, which as far as I can tell, does not have a free, free version. So that would be the kind of thing for an SEA group that you would look into like when you get to the point or if you get to the point where you're like, I want to spend money to accomplish this thing, uh, which is absolutely an option. So for Bringlelod, so for my SCA group, I went with, let's use something free. Uh, I picked Zapier. Their slogan is, it makes you happier. Which I think it's cute, but wasn't part of the reason why I started using it. Um, it limits you to 100 zaps per month. And so far I've been using this increasingly over 
the course of the year. And I have yet to hit that monthly cap. So for like the scale of an SCA group making posts, this works very well because their free version gives me everything that I, I have needed. And then if I do start running into that, like say we start using it a ton, I, I have options for basically limiting what things get automatically cross-posted so that I can basically stay below that, um, that bar if I need to. Zapier, I've found it's got, it's very easy to set up. I found uh, configuring the zaps to be pretty straightforward and they do have a lot of tutorials and I've reached out to their support team in the past and they've actually, they were very responsive, which um, I wasn't expecting and was happily surprised by. What I'm gonna do now is actually change my screen share to show you how I have this set up for uh, my website. So again, this is kind of the picture of what I'm gonna walk through. Starting with our website, I'm basically gonna show you an example of a post that was made and how it displayed on the other platforms. And then I'll do a similar kind of example with our, our Google Calendar. And at this point, if folks have questions or they want me to talk more about something, uh, please feel free to chime in by voice or chat and I'll do my, do my best to answer you. But I'm gonna pull up. I oh, have I have one question if you can multitask while you're doing that. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> um, I'm noticing that you know, you've got Discord and I think you're gonna build in Twitter and Face and Facebook is already on that that list. Of course, all mm -hmm. of those being social media sites that encourages or, or welcomes discussion of each post. Mm -hmm. um, have you run into any issues where uh, discussions kind of take on a life of their own and and information or decision making can start taking place on that rather than centralized where it needs to be? So that is definitely something that can happen. Um, and that is part of uh, kind of the way to, I mean, I don't want to say prevent because you don't want to prevent discussion from happening. You don't want to prevent, you know, decisions from being made, but the way to, there's basically a next step that is part of kind of retraining people's habits that has to be a part of that, which is, I have some posts that's gone up on my Facebook. People start talking about it. Oh, we've decided this should change or that should change. And then for, you know, the Facebook engagement, everybody's aware of what's going on. And then you have to have basically that next step, which is something was decided. The information has changed. We need to go back to the website and update it there. Um, for uh, uh, posts, uh, posts on the website, you can edit those in place. And for at least Zapier, it doesn't trigger like a repost on all of the platforms. And so if the like Facebook post is, hey, check out this full blog and you've edited it, anytime anybody clicks that link, they'll see the latest version of that information. Okay. Um, and so it definitely can happen. It's something to keep an eye out, especially you know, if we're still figuring out, you know, what your process needs to be, but basically having that, and I need to go update the website, <laughs> um, need I'm to also, update the website can help mitigate, yeah, kind of mitigate a lot of that. I'm also just kind of curious if you're, if, if the leadership of Brankwalot specifically has also taken to a, a making sure those social media columns are monitored. So if a conversation does take place, you're not finding about finding out about it three days later kind of thing. I'm, I'm an I old am. school engineer. <laughs> I, I think about what can go wrong. That's just my nature. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not nitpicking this. This is fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you teaching it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, so far I have had, I feel like I've gotten good support uh, from, from kind of other officers as I've been trying to do this. Uh, with the kind of uh, pandemic and not having in-person activities and just having like fewer activities in general, I found that, you know, it's, it's, we're not having to update the sites and, and the things as often. And so most of what I would do is, you know, if I see or hear about, um, and other people have done this for me too, to kind of help just keep an eye out for things that need to be updated. It's like, oh, you know, somebody in the Facebook is talking about uh, a guild meeting that's not on the calendar. 
I'm going to be like, Hey, make sure you, you submit the update for that. Make sure you do that. And so that kind of just training people, uh, that's something that I do. I feel like I've gotten pretty good support from other officers for that. And I, I can't say, and here's how to guarantee that everyone will support you and what you're doing. But I, I think as we have done this and people have kind of gone through the process of like making a post and seeing it go everywhere, that goes a long way to help build engagement for that. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Yeah, of course. Thanks for asking your questions. All right. So bring a website. Uh, this is, um, so we're looking at the homepage in the web browser. You can see my uh, WordPress dashboard is up at the top. Um, for anybody who's a web minister who has their stuff on WordPress, this is basically your interface uh, for doing things. If you've given, um, if members of your populace have accounts on their website, they will see a similar thing. They may not have as many options in like the dashboard, but in general, everybody has the ability to make a post. I'm going to click on that. Let it load. And I'm going to make this a little bigger in case the screen share is crazy. Um, WordPress is great. I love, I love making posts on them because it's a very um, pretty easy interface to use. You know, so add your title, start typing. So hi there. This is my post. Post. <laughs> Woo. And you can make them as fancy or as uh kind of straightforward as you want. It also has a lot of options for like embedding um, videos, embedding images, you know, to kind of give that visual interest if you want to. I'm not going to talk much more about making posts, but I think there's a lot of, a lot of power there. The, but basically it's, you type your post and you click publish. I'm not going to publish this one because I don't want like this little dummy post to go anywhere, but I am going to show you another post. That's fine. Um, so we have on our site, uh, I think on all the pages, there's something where you can see like recent activity, recent posts. And so we have this one, which was our March newsletter that has a link to a PDF. And then it's got a summary of all the things that were in the newsletter. So this is a post that was made on our website. And a tab, oops, sorry, my Zoom interface is getting, it's coming over. If I tab over to my Facebook, Right here in the middle, we can see I have, I, me, Kira, appear to have made a post on the website that says, Goldweird made a post. <laughs> here's the title and here's the link. And it has a big clickable uh, embed that Facebook gives you for that. So the Facebook, I did not make this post. It was automatically created by the Zapier application. So that anybody in the Facebook then says, oh, hey, cool, newsletter's there, click. I can read it. Uh, similar for our Discord. I think I have to do a new screen share for this. So this is our Bringwala Discord server. And we have, uh, among, among our channels, we have one that's just uh, BG cross posts. And this gives us a little kind of paper trail of posts that have been made on the website. So anybody who's in the server who doesn't have this channel muted, you can mute it if you want to, will have that hi highlighted whenever a new post happens. Uh, let me go back to the internet. So that kind of going back to the slide. So that's kind of this path that I was talking about. So you make a post on the website and then some version of that gets cross-posted to other platforms. Um, for our calendar path, so on our website, sorry, I'm having to shuffle around my Zoom interface. Um, so at the top of our the website, I have uh, buttons for feedback, calendar update, contacting an officer, and submitting an award recommendation. The calendar update is the one that I want to talk about. So this is just a little form that people can fill out that says, who are you? What are you doing? <laughs> when is it? Um, are you adding an activity? Are you updating one? Are you canceling one? And it basically allows people to submit that information without having a website account. So this is actually even easier than making a post. 
And then that comes to me in my email that I can use to update our calendar. The, there is the option, like I could have configured it where as soon as people type in their information, the calendar gets updated. I've chosen not to do that because as I basically, it's like I like having that kind of a set of eyes that can review it first for calendar items and updating the Google calendar is pretty, is very easy. So I've, I have left that as, as a, as a, like they, people send me information and then I update the calendar. Once I do that, and I have a good example here, our meetup automatically will get in a draft event. So I created um, a couple of days ago, an event on the Bringwad calendar for our Yule Revel in December. Our meetup has now a draft event for that. And so I can, if I want to edit that, double check the details, make sure the link for the website is in there and then we're good. And then I post that on our meetup and it's, I don't have to constantly go back to it to update it every time. So it's made it very easy to kind of keep our meetup synced with our calendar. Um, kind of with the calendar, um, the application that I'm using the, to manage this, which I'll, I'll click to shortly is Zapier. They also give you the option to like automatically create a live event on the meetup. But again, because it's a calendar thing, I just, I personally prefer to be able to review it first. Um, but as far as like effort level for me, it's still very, very, very minimal. And it's like, yeah, this is fine. This is, this is the level of energy that I can put into calendar management without feeling overwhelmed. Uh, but, oh, I can click over to our baronial calendar and this displays, uh, all of our activities. If I click to, oh, it's going to make me do them one at a time. <laughs> Gonna click all the way to December. <laughs> do, do, do. Oh, I need to add uh, other things on there. And then I can, we can see our, there's our Yule Revel that has exact, exactly the same details as the meetup event because they were created at the same time. So I only had to actually type in the event details once, which is great. Uh, let me click back to Thing. So here I'm going to, this last thing I'm going to kind of walk you through is the actual tool that I used to configure these automatic cross posts. Uh, so this is Zapier. Uh, it has a lot of applications that you can uh, sync. So you can just search, be like, I want to do, I don't even know what these are. Let's do Facebook. Facebook pages. And I want to sync it with an email. And you go, okay, cool. It got it. What about Gmail? And you can basically, it's very easy to search to be like, all right, what, what can I do to send something from Facebook to email? I don't love this as a path. I'm not suggesting it. I like going from website to email, website to Facebook, but this is just an example that's very searchable. Make that bigger. So the zaps, these are the paths that I have configured. So right now in this display, you can see three of them um, that goes from this little icon is the RSS feed icon, but essentially this goes from the website to the Discord. This one manages the website to email, and this one is website to Facebook. Um, so I'm gonna click on one of these. I don't think it really matters which one. I'll do the Facebook one because I know a lot of people use Facebook. Uh, so this is, their interface is actually, I, I like it, it's very simple. This is, here's the trigger, here's the thing that happens, what do you want me to do? What action do you want me to take? Um, and so the trigger for this is a new item in the feed, new post on the website. Um, and so that is the app that manages that is the RSS app by Zapier. And what I can say is I give it the URL. Say anytime there's a new item in my website feed, you're going to do something. Uh, and since this is a URL, it actually gives you the option to uh, add 
uh, filters to it. Like if you want to limit which things it actually triggers off of, you can do that. The also allows you to test things. And so I can tell it to load in uh, items. And so it says, you know, pick an item. I can say item I. So this is, it found a post called Eating Your Grief, Funerary Feasting Through the Ages. Join us on Tuesday. This is a post that I made uh, our group, our um, Barony had a, a watch party for a uh, cooking uh kind of walking through history of funerary feasting. So I made a post about it. And so it can pull that in and say, all right, here's all the information that's included with that post. Then the second part is you configure the action. Uh, this one is going to the Facebook. You could easily have it go to other apps if you want. But what I do is I say, choose the app and the event. The app is Facebook groups, which is different from Facebook pages. Um, I'm actually planning to convert this one over to the page and not the group, uh, but that's a future thing. And then what I want it to do is post a message. I then tell it which account. Um, so this is where the authentication comes in is you, you basically link your social accounts to the tool. Right now, this is linked to my personal Facebook account, but I've been talking with our, our the other officers and I'm planning to kind of switch this all over to the web minister email so that when I leave my office, this infrastructure will remain for whoever's next. And then this is kind of where you configure it of what happens. So in the Facebook group, Barony of Bringbalad, this is the message that happens. And so you can see there's a combination of these like pre-made fields and text that I have typed in. So the message that gets sent is whoever the creator of the post made a post on the website. And then I have the title and then uh, a link. And I can, if I want to, I can say, change this around, read the full post and start a discussion below. And that would be what gets sent to the uh, Facebook. And so again, this is a big field. You can essentially type whatever you want in here. Um, you can run into issues if you have, like Discord has a character limit. Uh, and so if you're trying to say, I wanna put um, like the entire post, like the body of the post in my message, you have to keep that in mind because you may run into character limits and the cross post could fail. But that's something you can kind of deal with as you get there. And then Zapier allows you to test it. And so whenever you're trying to kind of fiddle around with some new connection, it allows you to test it before you actually make it go live, which I find great. I love breaking things by testing them. Um, I'll click on another one of these. So the website to email is very similar. I have the trigger, I have the action, and I can actually click on the setup. And this is where it allows me to put in like the email address for our listserv. Um, who is it being sent from? This is being sent from the actual web minister email account. So I had to link that. And then this allowed, I used HTML, HTML formatting, uh, which you don't, certainly don't have to. You can just type into this uh, same way with the other one. And that's that. Um, I like these and, and actually this, this kind of model with, you know, you know, I'm going to create the thing. And then the app, the, the tools, Zapier, essentially walking you through it. Um, Hootsuite or Buffer or Social Profile, if you want to pay for it. Um, they all basically are designed on the same model, which is like, no, we're just going to walk you through. Um, so you can set up essentially whatever, whatever is crossing your mind. Uh, I think... I'm always open for more questions, but I'm going to do a quick summary of what did I talk about today. Um, so I'm starting with the assumption that our kind of default flow process for managing social media sites, like it works, but it can be improved a lot. And by using automatic cross-posting, we can reduce the amount of work that an individual has to do. We can increase basically our reach by including more platforms in our information distribution. And we can do it for free because 
the SCA is relatively small scale, that the free versions of a lot of these applications uh, will work for us. You don't have to pay money if you don't need, because you won't be, basically your capacity is not going to be great enough to, to, to hit that. And then I have really enjoyed using Zapier. I find it basically has everything that I need. So I recommend it, at least just if you want to try it out. Um, I can certainly help anybody who's interested. With that, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask. If you want me to go back through things, I can. I have a question. Sure, go ahead. Um, will you be posting these slides into the uh, Facebook event? I've been doing this on mobile and I can't see it, but that's because my eyes are bad and I chose to do mobile. <laughs> yeah, but absolutely. I would like to slides later. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, um, yeah, I can post the basically the PDF version. Uh, and I'm going to make a note to myself Thank to you. Facebook group. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's part, it's, I, I went back and forth. I was like, do I want to make slides? Then I decided yes, because I always find it helpful to have something to like skim through later. <laughs> yes, I appreciate it. Like I said, I could have made better choices and not done this on my phone and then been able to read them, but I did what I did. <laughs> Yeah, and just kind of spoiler alert, there's very little text in the slides, or there's almost no text in the slides that I didn't also talk about. So hopefully it'll just be a refresher. Oh, that's good. Yeah, any other any other questions, suggestions? Um, I sure. did get one about um, the, when you post on the WordPress website, mm -hmm. you have to post in post instead of a page. I know North Keep's website is traditionally just been pages. We mm -hmm. do a lot with the posts. Um, is that still able to be cross posted or does it have to be on the blog? Um, let's check. So I haven't. Um, so before I before I start searching and talking at the same time, I'm going to talk first and then I'll then I'll go to the app. Um, so I uh, basically started out um, kind of loosely aiming to, to have posts be, be the model for this kind of flow, um, partly because you get the free RSS feed, which makes it very easy to kind of pick up and do something with, and partly because if you are having people make posts on your website, and for, I have a good example of this. Um, so on the Bringlelod site, uh, sorry, my... The buttons are way bigger and I got very confused just then. Uh, we have, oops, helps to type correctly. Uh, is this the one? Nope. So we had basically our ANS class coordinator. Okay, this, the size of this is throwing me off. Um, nope, created a post with our class schedule in it. Um, if I search for 2021, I recently updated the page, so it's not, it's not on, here we are. Um, nope. Here we are. Uh, so this is a post, um, on our website that has, uh, the, basically a link to our, uh, classes on it. Displaying on the website, it functionally looks exactly the same as a page. Um, and so you can actually, in your website pages, you can embed just a full post as a way to like use these without, um, while also kind of using your pages. This is a little bit rambly and I apologize. The other benefit to posts is uh, if like, in this case, it was Sigrun de Berka. If she makes a post, she has control over that and basically can edit it whenever she likes, uh, which gives a lot of freedom to people who are trying to like update information because um, they can do it without having the web minister do it for them. But I can check, and the other part of your question is, does Zapier work for pages? Um, and it doesn't look like it does. So. I searched in Zapier for the app to be WordPress. And it looks like the options for just WordPress by default, it'll, it can trigger off of new posts, new media uploads, um, a new user creation, which 
probably won't ever need to use for the SCA new comments or when posts are updated. Uh, let me website. I'd have to do a bit of searching to see if there is a way for this tool to support basically looking for updates to pages. So it doesn't look like it offhand, but I can Google around and when I post the slides, I can also um, post, see if I can find a, a better answer for you. Cool. The other question about just WordPress and this functionality, mm -hmm. new user, like, can you do that? Or do you have to ask for the kingdom web minister? Because as far as I know, we have to ask for all new users to be approved by the kingdom web minister. So it's not like you, all of your officers would be uh, warranted web ministers, you know? Right. Yeah. So apps, it does. Um, so for the Bringle Lodge site, I'm going to go to my dashboard. Um, I'm not going to bring up all of our users because I don't want to display everybody's names in the recording. But from this dashboard, basically for the Bringle Lodge website, since I am the web minister, I am the administrator for that website, which means I can give people, I can create accounts for people, which are WordPress accounts. They're not accounts limited to this website, which is kind of cool because if you change officer positions in another group, that account can trail along with you. Um, I can also basically control the permissions of those users. Um, and so I can... Um, basically like I can give people the ability to draft posts or draft and publish. I can control whether or not, you know, can you edit somebody else's post? Can you edit somebody else's page? There's a, a lot of, um, actually I can kind of, I can show some of that with the roles. Um, is I have, I created a custom role for our officers that allows them to like publish and edit and delete their own posts, but not other people's and keeps people from kind of trampling on each other. Um, and because basically I can give officers accounts and I don't have to go through kingdom for that. They, um, the guidance that I've, I've gotten from kingdom is, you know, they have, it has to be um, attached to a personal email address rather than an officer one that's for accountability reasons. But other than that, I can, I can give whoever, whoever I want. Um, the ability to, to edit the website. And it's also fun because for pages like our, um, our persistent events, like the Candlemas page, and we have a fall baronial and we'll have like a Yule rebel, whoever the autocrat is, I can basically give them ownership of that page so that they can edit their own information, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, so, so far it's been very easy to like get people accounts and uh, just do that directly. Uh, Kira, you had a question in the chat. Um, can you post your contact information and would you consider teaching this class uh, for another kingdom? Uh, that was yes. from <laughs> yes. Nest and yes. Birch Reese. I would probably said that completely wrong, but anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, you okay, got great. it right. <laughs> oh, nice. It's so, a miracle. Um, so I can put in here... Um, especially while for the next, I think it's like the next six months or something like that. I'm the bring a one minister. So I'm going to put that email uh, on stayora.org. And then I'll post my personal email in the Facebook uh, group for, for this event so that if folks want to contact me, then you can go through Facebook or email if you want to, but yeah, absolutely. I'd be willing to, to, to kind of share this information with anybody who wants to listen to me talk. Thank you. It was very helpful. And I'm in Ethel Mark. So much appreciated. Yeah, anytime. And if you have, you know, if you're thinking about this several days down the road and you have a question, feel free to reach out. Thank I, you. I I have, you know, I've been I've been kind of trying this out and working with it for a while. And I've I've been very happy with like it. I really do feel like this type of setup makes things a lot easier <laughs> to manage. It sounds um, amazing. Um I'm hoping to implement it or get it implemented in North Keep um, because so far it's been like the officer or the person that that has all of the different platforms just has mm -hmm. to monitor them all yeah. and then manually cross post anything they see that didn't get sent to the email list or sent yeah. to the Facebook group or whatever. Um, on that note, kind of, do you have any analytics on 
uh, which platforms get the most use? Um, I, so I, I have some, uh, this is not at all well compiled, so it's, it, hopefully I won't be too rambly. So I know that for Bringwalod, we have, um, definitely more people that are, that's engaged with our Facebook posts. I think though we have, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember. We have something like a thousand members in our Facebook group on average, like a normal post that doesn't have anything exciting in it. will probably get um, like a hundred to 150 users engaging with it uh, by Facebook. That usually means they like it. They share it. They comment. Basically they've done some sort of interaction with the post um, for isn't like things that have come from the website that are like, exciting things. Uh, we can get up to, I don't know, like 500 or so like engagement rating. So um, it doesn't necessarily mean that like 500 people all read the posts and are going to do something about it, but you're at least reaching people. Um, and then for our discord server, I want to say we have on the order of maybe, a, maybe a hundred people in our server. Uh, so when posts or information or conversations happen in there, it's like, that's another kind of pretty large group of people that, that have a chance to see things. Um, and I know like on Instagram, you have, you know, I don't have, I don't have any, any like statistics for how many people actually see our Instagram, but I know that photos get more engagement than pretty much anything else. Honest, actually photos and, um, like posts. No, let me back that photos definitely get a lot of engagement. Um, usually three to four to five times the engagement on Facebook. And then same thing for uh, our website. Whenever we have uh, posts or pages with pictures on them, generally the interaction and the click rate goes up. Yes. Um, I will say though, a fun thing that I guess I could have expected, um, cause I do kind of keep an eye on like the site statistics. Um, so our so Jetpack for this site, um, WordPress gives you statistics for free on like, how's your site doing? Um, and so you can give you an idea of like, there were 45 views of the website on this page. And I'm gonna be like, hang on, what happened on that day? Why did everybody go to the website? Um, and I have found, um, so on a normal day, we probably get, I don't know, like 10 to 15, uh, like views on the website. Um, a lot of which are probably me. <laughs> uh, but I did, I have found that on like the day of an event, since I've been, you know, kind of trying to kind of lean hard into information is on the website, the like number of views on our website go up by like 10 times. And so instead of having 40 people, we have had 400 people like visit the website today, which is kind of cool. Um, which actually gives you other options for like additional marketing, because if you're posting something on an event and everybody's going to your website, you can put something on the landing page that is like a teaser thing, a recruitment thing, who knows what, and just like amplify the, the reach of whatever you're doing. I have been thinking about actually like compiling statistics based on this, this wonderful pool of data. I just haven't done it yet. It's kind of difficult because the official presence is the email list. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if there's any analytics possible on that unless somebody actually <sighs> replies to or you know responds to something yeah um, you could you could kind of experiment with it like you could actually because what I could do from Zapier is I could turn off um you know for, for a day or some period of time I could turn off the like discord cross posts the Facebook cross posts and only have my posts go to the website and see you know, on a day I make a post, what's my engagement on the website look like versus when I don't. And you can, you could kind of get, get a, a sense for how many people you're reaching that way. And then you turn your things back on. Um, the, I didn't, I didn't pull it up because I, I didn't do it in advance and I don't want to have you guys suffer through me digging through my email. Um, but we also have our, our email path. And so whenever, posts on the website, they get an email. It's like bracket, bring post title. Uh, 
and since and it was kind of funny because before I set that up we actually didn't have anything going to well we had practically nothing going to our email and now we pretty regularly have have information going out that way which is I think is nice Uh, I think I heard somebody trying to speak before. I don't know if folks still have more questions. Read receipts. Yep, could give you email list analytics. And I, I have never gotten uh, like access to the actual like administrative interface for the email list. So it's possible that there's something behind that that could be used. I don't, I haven't done anything with that though. So I don't know how to get to it. There is a way to do it and you should really try that because you get a lot of spam. You're going to have a huge, <laughs> huge list. I'll pass. <laughs> Sophina, mm -hmm. um, just a yes or no question, but okay. if I, for my own personal use, because I'm trying to do some SCA media off my personal web presence. Mm -hmm. um, if I wanted to get into the HTML stuff and hand code, because I have a relatively small network of, of social media and websites I want to connect with, mm -hmm. is that something you could, among other resources on the web, help me out with? Or is that outside of your scope of expertise? Yeah, I'd be happy to help. Um, I haven't done it personally, so there would be a little bit of learning on the, along the way, but I'm happy okay. to help you do that. There um, also might be, um, are you, is your the kind of media that you're creating, is it primarily like text or video or um, I'm else? looking that I'm looking to link uh, a YouTube channel, a blogger site and Facebook and Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, just pretty much that quartet's what I'm looking at right now. Okay. Yeah. There are definitely tools um, that could help you do that. If you don't want to hand write all of it. Um, Okay. Basically, the, the ones that I've talked about today, like Zapier works really well for I am dealing with images and video and text and who knows what, and I need to do a lot of stuff for it. They're kind of broader um, uh -huh. scope. If you're doing a you know, like smaller scale, a little more narrow, I actually have a couple of um, tools that might work for you. Um, okay. Okay. Stream yard I'm, is one, but we can I'm just kind yeah, of thinking we, out. I'm just kind of thinking out loud, but I, I am the guy that's like, oh, I can learn how to do this myself. And even if it takes <laughs> me a year and I do it wrong, I, I enjoy it, which is why I'm, I'm asking. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you can absolutely do it by yourself. And I'm happy to help okay. in any way that I can. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, I'll, I'll post my contact info in the, in the Facebook group after this. Uh, any other questions? Some. Sounds like we might be getting to the end of it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for teaching. That was really incredible. I'm super excited to uh, have the Namron web minister take a look at the uh, video and see if we can get this instituted in Namron as well. So Excellent. Yay. I, I've had two friends IM me during the class going. They specifically <laughs> did not take the class because they were afraid that if they took it and were noticed, they would get roped into <laughs> local social media deputy show. <laughs> well, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully with this, it'll be easier. <laughs> yep, definitely. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Well, everybody have a good evening. Um, I'll get the video posted tomorrow and. Um, or not tomorrow, probably closer to this weekend. But anyway, <clears throat> that way it'll be there for reference as well. Excellent. Well, thank you all for attending. Thank you. Yep. Yes, thank See you. See you later. Everybody have a good class. night. Thank, thank you so much. This is awesome. Thanks. I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, very much so. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye-bye.